All right, folks, God bless you. Welcome to This Is It Before the Fire. So this is very interesting. I had a whole bunch of scriptures up here on my desktop, and I mean super natural, never delivered before scriptures. And I was, I've been working on delivering them to you. I got a phone call um, from a friend of mine while I was doing this video. Oddly enough, the entire thing crashed. And um, my friend was called, that was calling me is a pretty close friend of mine, and he's not converted. And uh, his dad died yesterday. And um, in my heart, just is just, ugh. it's just, I, I mean, I know for those of y'all that, you know, that know the Lord, that have come to the knowledge of the truth, that have been converted, that have been born again, you know that they just don't hear it and neither do they understand it. So I'm going to just, I'm just going to go with the flow right now and I'm going to just address what just happened because I think the way the Lord does things uh, is in the timing is always important. So I, I want to talk about this because I think this can be a huge benefit to everybody, not just, you know, my friend and who I just am grieved for. So let's talk about getting saved. Let's, I think this is super duper important that people understand this. Otherwise, I don't think the Lord would have let it roll out tonight like it did. I mean, my, my, my whole desktop disappeared I mean, I'm talking like eight or nine windows that were in order, ready to be delivered via this, you know, this um, program that I'm using to, to load up right now. And uh, it's late and I'm, and I'm up doing this and I get a, a call from my friend. He texted me and I can, his, his dad died yesterday. So I know he's hurting and, and uh, you know, it's, it's grieving me because I've been trying to minister to him, you know, and just showing, hey, the Vatican's a snake, buddy, you know, just like, seek out the truth with all your heart, and, you know, he's made some, he's made some attempts to pray and ask God for forgiveness, but he's like, I feel, I don't feel anything, Johnny, and, and I'm like, well, just keep trying, knock, and the door will be open to you, you know, just keep knocking, and, and so the thing is, I think this is super important that all of us talk about this because it really intersects all of our lives and it's it's probably something that is going to be beneficial to a lot of people watching this video. So let's talk about my friend and his dad very briefly. So my friend is he's a, as far as people I know on morality I I he's up on the the higher shelf than all the you know all the people I I would, you know, just deal with in a, in a general, in a general way, you know, whether or not it's people I know from work, construction, whatever, you know, friends I've made over the years, you know, I hold this friend of mine in pretty high esteem, but I don't put him on the top shelf because he's never ceased from lying and he'll, you know, and he's honest about it. He'll, you know, he'll say, yeah, uh, you know, on jobs, I'll, someone's like trying to get a hold of me, I'll lie and I'll say, well, Bobby, you can't do that. I mean, that means you've never repented of lying. And so, you know, I've, I've tried to explain to him, it's, 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 you're either all the way in or you're not in at all. So you're either all in or you're not in at all. So, you know, I've been, I've been trying to explain to them. It's, it's not that you're not a really good guy and a really decent and moral guy, but still you haven't crossed over to the other side because you're not willing to let go of, you know, some other, you know, stuff that's sinful behavior. So anyway, so, so, uh, his dad died, you know, two days ago and I think two days ago. Um, so his dad was a West Point graduate. His dad, I met his dad, uh, before his dad started declining, you know, his dad's up there in age a little bit and he just ended up in a nursing home recently, but he's been on the decline for years, but I met him way before, you know, that decline began. And his dad's a very super sweet man, very, and he's a, just one of these people that's a total moral person, you know, I mean, you don't, that, you don't run into a lot of people that have that kind of character these days at all. Those people are like, it's like, 
it's a generational that, that's almost completely gone. So his dad was one of those people, a moral man, a good man, a good husband, a good provider, a great father. You know, he was all those things. And so it would be, it's almost impossible for my friend to believe that his dad would end up in the pit. And so because I'm required to only to speak truth, 100% truth or nothing, you know, when he, I, I've spoken to him about, you know, you either have been born again or you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So when I'm ministering to him and I'm, you know, we're out doing our thing, whether or not we're out at the lease or whatever we're doing, you know, I'll, I'll be explaining to him, well, this is what the word says. So unless you're born again, you, you know, you won't enter the kingdom of heaven. When you get born again, you get turned up. And then I'll show him the Vatican. Look, the Vatican's a freaking snake wearing a crown. I mean, you know, look at the U.S. currency. The bombings are on the money. Oh, my God. And I'm showing him this other world, the other world that runs parallel. There's two parallel universes. Uh, one's lies, one's truth, and, but they're in the same dimension and they're running side by side. And I'm trying to show him this and I'm like, you know, this is what the Bible says. So when his dad died, you know, the other day and he was able to get in touch with me and he 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 said you know Johnny I know my dad's ascended and I know my dad's in heaven now and I, I can't I cannot I cannot say oh yeah he's fine that's disingenuous that's a lie that means I'm not I'm not real I'm not legit that means I'll say whatever I want to say so he'll feel good right then well, that's a lie. That's not true. I mean, anyone that's a born again believer, you know, you either got converted or you didn't. If you didn't get converted and you died, if you didn't get converted and you die, I'm sorry, but you're in the pit. It doesn't matter if it's my mom or my dad or my brother or my sister, which I've lost brothers. And I can tell you neither one of them is, is in heaven. You know how I know they were neither one of them was ever became a new creation. They were never born again. They never repented of their sins. There was no change in them whatsoever from the day they, you know, from the time, you know, we were brothers to the time they died. There was no conversion. There was no obvious anything. There was no turning away from lies and telling only truth. There was no, you know, uh, remorse for anything like fornication or lying or stealing or there's no, none of that. So if they died in that condition, the, the only thing I can go by whether or not their eternal salvation uh, was secure is what the Word of God says. Because it doesn't matter what I believe or what I want to believe or what my friend wants to believe. That doesn't matter. Only thing that matters is the Word of God, the truth. That's the standard by which everything is set. And this is super important because, you know, I just got off the phone with him again. And the other day when he had called, he said, oh, my dad, I know my dad's in heaven. I know I know he's ascended. Well, can you imagine how bad I want to comfort my friend and say, dude, but you can't say, oh, yeah, he's in heaven. Oh, yeah. Oh, heck, yeah, he's good. Bobby. Well, that would give him the Band-Aid he needs right now emotionally. And I, I wish I could do that. I mean, I wish I could give him that that comfort. You know what I mean? But I can't. I can't go along with, oh yeah, he, oh, yeah, he's in heaven and all that. Otherwise, I'd be a phony. Let me show you what the Word of God says, and then I'm going to talk about. Let's make sure everyone's salvation is secure. I, you know, I think this video. I think this is the Lord leading into this next part of the, the series of understanding the truth of the Word of God, because this is really super important. What's the most important thing on on the whole thing you call existence. What's the most important crux of the matter of everything? Did you get redeemed? Other past that, nothing. I mean, is there anything else that matters? I mean, you either have eternal life or you have eternal death. I mean, you know, in, but when you're in the middle of, you know, being a sky surfer running around with a bunch of hot babes and doing your thing you don't really think about all that stuff because it's like hey i'm busy right 
It wasn't until I came to the point to where I was actually disgusted with myself that the Lord was able to help me. I was just like, I suck. You know, I mean, I, I had I had a real conviction of of me, myself. I took a long, hard look at myself and and that, you know, I had I had lived a life that was, you know, wild and crazy guy, a lot of fun, uh, made a crap load of money and and uh, but along the way, I had hurt people, lied, gotten in trouble, you know, done things I thought I'd never do, um, been involved in things I thought I'd never be involved in. And I was and there was no way to erase that chalkboard, so to speak, that goes around with you every day of your life because you feel like, wow, I've done this and there's no way to drop that burden. That's the record that's held against you in the pit by the demon. You now I want to give you some methodology real quick. I've shown everybody, even in the Bible, it says, you know, the word spirit means superhuman angel demon. Until you get converted, you are a superhuman angel demon right here. Ephesians 2, and you he has quickened who are dead in your trespasses and sins. That's Ephesians 2, 1. Wherein in time past, you walked according to the prince of the power of the air. Right here, see the word, the spirit, the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. Well, that's everybody until you get converted. Let's look at the word spirit because uh, the spirit is the prince of the power of the air. So think of, now watch this. Now let me show you some. Let me give you a visual representation. So inside you, there's an angel that's up and a demon that's down. It's a twin system, like in your head, communication uh, think of it as a field of energy. Good goes up, down goes bad, uh, bad goes down. So inside of you, you have a demon and you have an angel, a twin system. One eye is good, one eye is bad. One eye is up, one eye is down. Okay, well, the demon, think of that like a, as a cell phone, as a receptor and a transmitter for information that goes to the angel of the bottomless pit where you have your own personal little cell, where you have your own personal little uh, canker worm that's feeding off you your whole life. So the invisible line from the pit up to you, that goes to, that's the, what's inside of you is a demon that receives that signal. Okay, and then the other line that comes down from heaven that goes into you, the signal is an angel. But this, the flesh itself is ruled by the, the goddess of twins, Themuel. That's what the Statue of Liberty is. It's the twin goddess. That's why the twin towers were bombed right in front of her, holding her torch with a penis. So we're in this twin system, angel, demon, okay? And that's you. You are a superhuman angel, demon. That's the spirit that runs you. Now, when you get converted, you clip the line. How many, how many times have y'all seen me do this? You cut the line to the pit. So everywhere you go in your life, since the moment you're born, you have one eye good, one eye bad. The eye that's bad is transmitting that signal to your entire life record all the way down to your, you have, just think of it, have your, you have your own little um, section like you do in your computer of memory that goes straight down to its own little memory bank. You got your own canker worm feeding off you your whole life. Everywhere you go, that's the punishment for being here. You're dualistic in nature. And everywhere you go, you're transmitting that signal down to your little your little cell in the, in the pit, your little own dungeon in the pit. You think you're fine because you're walking around. You don't, you don't, you have no idea that that's actual methodology of what's going on. And you have another eye that's going out. Now, the twin goddess runs the host body system. It's the twin goddess, Themule. And that's why they worship the mother goddess. Catholic Church worships the virgin because it's all a dualistic. It's a twin system. And that's what they are able to dominate. That's what they own. Satan owns the flesh. So if you're in the flesh, Satan owns you. And that's what it says right here. Now watch. Let me show you. It says, when in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the Look right here. The prince, the prince of the power of the air, right there. Um, who's the prince of the power of the air, right there? He's the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. Now pay attention. Among whom also, and we had all our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh. See the flesh. Okay, so 
the prince of the power of the air, the spirit. Think of a radio signal that goes around with you everywhere. Prince of the power of the air, like airwaves. He goes everywhere you go. Your little airwave, your little cell phone demon goes straight to the pit. Angel of bottomless pits running all of them. You're basically part of a hive. And you're going around your whole life and your signal's being transmitted. And there's a record against you. Well, when you get converted, you get born again. Your other eye turns up and you become single. Your eyes become single. The Bible says if your eye be single, your whole body is full of light because you have one eye that's up, which is light, one eye that's down, which is dark. And so when you get converted, you have eyes that have become single and your whole body is full of light. And so you're no longer dualistic in your nature. Okay, that's why the Bible says, cleanse your hearts, you double-minded. Uh, so that's the sin of double-mindedness. And that's the whole thing about being here. We're committing spiritual adultery with another spirit within a host body system. Okay, so I want you to really understand the methodology. And I want you to see the definition one more time just so you see it. So here it is. When you walked according to the print, the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, who's the prince of the power of the air? That's Satan. And what is he? He's the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. Now watch. Here's the word spirit. It's G4151. Watch. A current of air. That's why, remember, if y'all saw the 2020 dating commercial, when he gets a text, he goes, <gasps> And he takes in that big breath. I mean, that's so totally staged. But now you know why he did that current of error. That is breath. Now watch. Vital principle. Now watch this. Superhuman in parentheses. And then look. An angel, comma, demon. Because that's what the superhuman is. We are all superhuman. The whole human race is that right there. Superhuman. You have an angel and a demon that's running you. Everywhere you go. Signal transmitted to the pit. That's the record against you. So you have a record against you that's being documented everywhere you go, every day of your life, everything you do. That's the all-seeing eye on the back of the dollar bill, transmitting your signal to the pit. Okay, well, when you get born again, you turn away completely from lying and evil. You turn the opposite direction. The word repent means to turn and go the other direction, by the way. So here you are. You're like, I'm turning away from myself and what I want. I want to serve the Lord and him only. So here's the meaning of life. Serve the Lord your God and serve him only. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your strength, and all your mind. So now... So when you turn away from yourself, you get inverted and your eyes become single. And then you're born again. Now, if you take two magnets and you try and put, I have two magnets I've done this with just to show you. But if you push two magnets like this and they won't go together, there's a field in between them. Boom, boom. They won't. All you got to do is turn one upside down and they'll just smack together. Bam. That's what happens to us in a, in a magnetic field, in a spiritual connection way. So you understand. So when you get inverted, it breaks down the middle wall of partition. Think of that magnetic field, that middle wall of partition. And when you get inverted, bam, that middle wall of partition has gone because you turn back and you get, bam, you get put back together. So you've been converted. The word converted means turn the other direction. That's what it means. I'll show it to you. Unless you're converted. You will not enter the kingdom of heaven unless you're born again. You will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So here's the thing. As much as I would like to tell one of my good friends, yeah, your dad's fine. I can't say that. Otherwise, I'm a lying, disingenuous jerk. I mean, I can't do that because then I'm not doing any good for him. I mean, then I'm lying to him. I'm destroying my own relationship with God now. Uh, like, oh, I'm supposed to make him feel better, so I'm supposed to lie to my God? That's ridiculous. Why do you think the Lord God says, anyone who loves his father, his mother, his wife, or his children more than me is not worthy of me? I mean, those are pretty serious words. But why? I mean, if we're all made in the image of God, right? Yeah, well, we're made in the image of Elohim. So again, uh, what's the image of Elohim? Uh, Genesis 2, an, an idol. So watch. So I'm going to just really just keep going. So Genesis 1, watch. 
and God and Elohim said, see the word Elohim I showed you in the last video, who Elohim is, who's the Lord God, the Hebrew word 410, who the self, who's uh, Jehovah, the self-existent eternal Jehovah, that's Jesus in the New Testament. So let me just show you, look, Genesis 126, Elohim, that's the fallen, Elohim said God, okay, Elohim means gods of the supreme God angels, magistrates, judges. So Elohim are magistrates, Elohim are angels, Elohim are judges, they're gods, and they're of the supreme God. And they said, let us make man in our image. And here's the image, to shade a phantom. Okay, so man is a phantom, which is exactly true. That is figuratively an illusion, exactly. Resemblance, hence a representative figure, especially an idol. Image vain show. Now, ready? Uh, is it, no one's trying to tell me that the Lord God, the King of Kings, the uh, the pure essence of God, is out making idols. You're not saying that, are you? Because then you're nuts. Uh, no, he's not. But the fallen Elohim are making idols. And then when that happens, okay. Well, then that happens. Well, then he has his plan of redemption, and he's going to go into the system in the form of Adam. So Adam becomes his representative in the system in order to redeem his children that were led away captive by Lucifer so they could have free will, have sex, have family, and think that they're creators. So anyway, so they're led away captive. Okay, well, in order to get them back, the Lord God, Jesus, comes into the system and that Adam he breathes into his uh, nostrils the breath of life, and man becomes a living soul in Genesis 2. And then the breeding together of literally life and death, because if, you're, if you sided with Lucifer and you were carried away captive, you're, you're dead. So to give you back, to come into the system, and you have life breeding with death, and then you have life and death in the same host body, life and death, you have up and down, good and evil. We are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So then the two have bred together in Genesis 3. So now they've, they've commingled and you have life and death in that same host body system. So then Jesus has to come into the system. So El, the Almighty God, comes into the system as Emmanuel. With us is El. So watch. Real quick jump to Isaiah. Isaiah 7, here we go. So it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. You shall call his name Imanu. See how I colored it blue, Imanu. And then I highlighted El, the last part of his name is El. Because that's a conjunction in Hebrew. Imanu means with us is. And then El is El, the Almighty God. Watch. See, here it is, 6005 right there, Imanu right there, Imanu L. And Imanu means with us is, so accompaniment, and so with us is, and then El is Hebrew word 410, watch. See, El, Hebrew word 410, it means the Almighty God. So Jesus is, with us is the Almighty God. That's why to understand in Genesis 2 that when the Lord God formed man, this is Jesus' version of man coming into the system, into the system because he's breathing into him the breath of life. Look, and the Lord God formed man from the dust and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. I'm going to change that to a different color. I'll change that to, I'll change that to light blue. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Okay, well, look right here. See the word Lord? What's it say? The self-existent eternal Jehovah. Okay, now let's walk this back real quick. Let's go to John, where you got to get born again. John chapter 3. It says, Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then he says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and the, look, the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So watch. 
here's the word spirit again. I'm going to click on it. Remember the when you walked according to the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan, you walked according to the spirit, the pneuma of the prince of the power of the air. But who is he? He's the superhuman and angel demon. He runs the twin system like the twin towers. That's why they have the twin towers. So Satan, the angel of the bottomless pit, runs the superhuman thing, angel demon. But look right here. Or, or divine Christ Holy Spirit. So see, you're either a superhuman angel demon, which is under condemnation, or you get born again of the spirit, capital S, and then your eyes become single. They're both up and you become born again and you have Christ Holy Spirit. Watch. So you go from superhuman angel demon. So see, look, superhuman and angel demon and the demon is transmitting your signal to the pit every day of your life that you're under condemnation and you're feeding your own locust from the pit that's going to hatch is when you die you go to your own your own canker worm your own locust and you are devoured and then when the pit opens you come out of the pit in the form of locust that's it. This is the methodology. I've shown you all the stuff from the Vatican and all these other folders that prove it. Okay, here we go. So you're a superhuman and angel demon or, or, say it out loud, divine. Say it out loud, God, Christ, Spirit, the Holy Spirit. But see, look, look that's Spirit 4151. It's the exact same word as Ephesians 2. When you walked according to the prince of the power of the air, the air, the spirit, but that spirit, the prince of the power of the air, is the superhuman angel demon. He runs the twin system. He runs like the twin towers. That's why they bombed the twin towers to say, hey, we're done with the twin system. We've totally taken over. Evil, evil has taken over good. The twin towers, good and evil, burn them down. Now put up the one world freedom tower, which represents evil has taken over. That's what it is. Okay, so now back to my friend and back to everybody. I just read you that Jesus said, unless you're born again, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So that means you're in the pit. Let's just be blunt. If you didn't get born again, then you're in the pit. That's why you must be born again. This is no joke. This is no like, oh, it's a good idea. No, this is everything. And the only way you can get born again is you have to go and you have to say, I'm guilty as charged. You have to see yourself in the light. You've got to have some conviction. you got to know that you've done stuff that, you know, you can't pay for. You've got to know that you're a sinner. You can't think that you're, you know, you're better than anyone else. I mean, if you think you're better than anyone else, you're not going to make it. That's the way it works. I got to the point where I was just disgusted with myself. I was like, this sucks. I don't want to be like this. I don't want to ever hurt anybody anymore. I just, I don't want to be responsible for hurt feelings and hurt lives. You know, that kind of disgusted with myself. So anyway, so let's look at the Bible about what it says now about getting saved. Jesus, remember what says, who's Jesus? Ready? Jesus. The name Jesus is from Hebrew origin. Look, of Hebrew origin, Hebrew word 3091, and it means Jesus, that is Yehoshua. Okay, but let's go look at the Hebrew root of the word. It's Yehoshua, which means, see, look, Yehoshua. And it means Jehovah saved. That's what Yeho, Yeho is Jehovah, Yeho, and then Shua is saved. So let's go look at Yeho. Oh, the self existent eternal Jehovah. So who's, oh, y'all remember the self existent eternal Jehovah from Genesis 2? Yeah, that's the Lord God. See? And the Lord God formed man, right there, the Lord God. The self-existent eternal Jehovah formed man from the dust out of the clay. Now listen, the reason it's out of the clay is because, of course, he knows he's gonna, they're going to co-mingle with the Genesis 1 race. They're going to co-mingle, and then God's the potter, and we're the clay, and over the years of his, our life, he forms us. And when he calls us, and we get converted, 
just like a potter, he's the potter, we're the clay. So that's why surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. That's why Genesis 29, 19 says, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. So that's, that means you're the real deal made from the Lord God. You've been converted. So look, and the Lord God formed man from the dust. See the word Lord? It's self-existent, eternal Jehovah. Okay, watch this. John, sorry, John 3, Jesus said, unless you're born again. Jesus said, unless you're born of the Spirit, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Let's look at the word Jesus, 2424. Ready, watch. 2424. Jesus, that is Yehoshua. It's from 3091, which is Jehovah saved. Yeho is Jehovah. Shua is saved. Yeho is from the self-existing eternal Jehovah. I want you to look right here. 19, 19. Sixty-one, one nine. What happens when you invert a one nine and in it becomes a six one? If you if you take a one nine and you go back the other way, it becomes a six one. It doesn't it? Yeah. Y'all know what the number nineteen in the Bible is? It's slaughter. You know what the number six one is? Verily of a truth, slaughter the truth. I wonder what the uh, odds are that the number right there, when you take a one nine and six one, and you simply look at them as the twin system, like a one nine and a six one, they're twins. They're in opposition to each other. Did you know the Lord told me to look it up last night? I was like, look up one nine and six one, and I looked it up, and nineteen is slaughter, and then sixty one is verily of a truth, and I was like, well, did you know? That's all I've been showing you is that in this system, the the lie slaughters the truth. They hide it. They conceal it. They'll do anything they can to slaughter the truth. And I was like, you got to be kidding. One nine means slaughter and six one means verily of a truth. I was like, and then guess what? I heard the Lord tell me to do. Look it up the other way. The first way I was like, Look it up, 6119, and look at the other words. Let me show you what it is. Go get your, oh, by the way, go get your spatulas right away. Okay, so Strong's, 6-1. Hunting. Do you know the B system mean, is a hunting trap, right? Hunting, catch. Okay, so six one means hunting catch. Uh, y'all remember y'all remember the clothing line called four hunted, hunted for dinner. What about odd future Wolfgang kill them all? Huh? What about lurking class? You remember the clothing companies I've shown you? They're all about hunting and killing something, sheep. Oh, that's right. It's hunting and killing sheep. That's part of several clothing lines I've shown you. That's weird. And now I'm showing you that the Lord told me, look up the numerology of my name in the Bible, because don't forget God's perfection. Y'all want to see perfection? You want to see perfection? 6-1, hunting, a catch. That's why we're hunted all day long. Ready, Strong's, 1-9. Goodness. Okay, now, ready? Now, y'all are probably not, you're probably a little uh, get confused right now, but just give it a sec. The word 19 means to do good. Intrinsic goodness, especially with personal quality, with stress on the kindly rather than the righteous side of, the, of goodness. So it literally means inherently, intrinsically 
good. We're the tree of the knowledge of what? Good and evil. Oh, that's crazy. So the number the number 19 right here means that which is intrinsically good. And then the number 61 means hunting a catch, a hunting trap, catch that which is intrinsically good. And now I know some people may be going, oh, I don't know, click. You know what? The second the Lord showed me that, you know what I heard? It was so weird. I was at that computer and I heard, <laughs> a hunting we will go, a hunting we will go, hi ho the day we ho, a hunting we will go. That's pretty good, right? Come on. <laughs> so I know I heard that. I, I'm looking at you in the eye. I heard that. I was like, that's crazy. And then I heard the Lord tell me, look up Dario. What? Look up the meaning of the name Dario. You know, a hunting we will go, a hunting we will go. Hi-ho, the Dario. I was like, look up the meaning of the name Dario. Okay. There we go. Meaning of the name Dario. So I did what the Lord told me. Look up the the name meaning of the name Dario. Here you go. Possessing goodness. That's the meaning of the name Dario. Dario means possessing goodness. Strong's nineteen means intrinsic goodness, which means possessing goodness. That's what intrinsic means. Possessing goodness. 6-1 means to hunt and catch. Jesus' name in the Old Testament, the self-existent eternal Jehovah, is 1961. Now I'm going to show you the clothing line called 400. Hunted for dinner. Oh, what are they hunting? Goodness. The good in you is what they're hunting. The evil in you is hunting the good in you. The evil you is hunting the good you. And it goes on your whole life. Can you believe what you're looking at? Hi ho, the intrinsic goodness. A hunting we will go. What? That's what Dario means. Intrinsic goodness. That's what Jesus is. New. 1961 number associated with his name means in the Bible. Wow. <laughs> try and wrap your brain around what I just showed you. Just try and wrap your brain around. It's everything I've been telling you. I mean, why do you think I'm falling out of the sky with fangs on? Fangs on. And I'm surrounded by a bunch of women, attractive women with fangs. It's a vampiric system. We're hunted. Evil, evil hunts good your whole life. Everywhere you go, everything you do. It's just evil hunting you from the shadows. Oh, that's why there's a clothing line called lurking class. Because it's lurking inside of you to kill you and destroy you. Your own reflection is killing you. That's what's up. Your own shadow is killing you. Your flesh is killing you. Okay, so unless you're born again, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. You will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Let me show you what a lot of people that go to church think. A lot of people that go to church think uh, this. They think they're going to be just great because they go to church and they talk about Jesus. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is, which is in heaven, on that day many will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have we not cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, 
So Jesus is saying, get away from me, you that work iniquity. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. See right there? So, there's going to be how, uh, A, a few people, B, some people, D, many, many people that are going to get left out because they thought they were in even, but they weren't on the rock. See, they weren't on the rock. You know what the rock is? Y'all know what the rock is? Right side up, upside down, knowing that system. That there's a good you and that there's a bad you. you. If you don't know that, you're not on the rock. That is the rock. Because in Matthew 16, Jesus showed us what the rock was. That means you've recognized the Messiah. Watch. So let's go to Matthew 16 now. Okay, so... Jesus is asking who, if people know who he is. So he says, So when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Okay, ready? The point of him saying this and all his disciples answering, and every answer was incorrect was to show you that man can't tell you who he is. You have to seek it out yourself. You have to find out yourself. Now, I can point you. I can show you what the Lord showed me. But if you don't endeavor with your heart to find it out, you're never going to find it out. You have to want to know the truth. You have to be willing to know the truth above all else. Do you want to know the truth more than you want your girlfriend or your boyfriend to love you? Do you want to know the truth more than anything? Is the truth more important to you because you just don't want to be like you are anymore? You don't want to be what you are anymore? Well, then you're a real candidate for getting saved. If you're like half-hearted, no, I'm sorry, or okay, whatever, you're probably not going to get saved. If you're Jesus said, when you seek me with all your heart, you'll find me. See, because we have a heart that's half Genesis 1, half Genesis 2. You got a serpent and a sheep in the same heart. And not all of your heart searches out the truth. It's your nature. You're divided. You've got to say, Lord, help me. You can't beat this. You cannot beat this. But you can confess yourself that you're a sinner and you deserve your punishment and you know you can't beat it and forgive me. And would you please accept my apology? And I'm asking you to forgive me for what I've done. And he'll forgive you. And we'll cut that line to the clip and you'll get inverted and you'll understand the mystery of everything. And since I just showed you, cut that line to the clip, which you've seen me do a hundred times. I said, you got it. There's a right side up you. There's an upside down you. You got to cut the line to the pit. You got to sever the line and get inverted. And then two become one. You get born again. You, instead of an angel demon, the angel demon turns into the Holy Spirit. So you have two separate things running you. An angel, a demon. You kick out the demon and you become the Holy Spirit. That's it. There's no more duality. No more two spirit system running you. Let me show you something. Ready? Y'all ready to freak out? Who's ready to freak out? Let's go to, let's go to Isaiah 7. Everybody go to Isaiah 7 and freak out with me. Ready? Uh, you know what? I'll go back to Matthew in just a sec. I got to grab this first. This is too important. Then we'll go back to Matthew. Okay. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. You shall call his name Immanuel, which means, what does it mean? Immanu means with us is El, the Almighty God. Okay, now watch. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Look at this. Butter, butter and honey shall he eat. 
What does that have to do with anything? It means to join a wall of protection. Wow, that's that's fascinating. And honey means honey from its stickiness by uh, to stick together. And that he may know to know to refuse evil to cast off cast away evil evil i i find it interesting that the word that the word for evil is ra like <laughs> the sun god ra in that fascinating that's the word for evil ra you shall so he shall choose good he shall cast away evil and choose look choose to choose, select, good. Now remember the self-existent eternal Jehovah, it means to hunt good. <laughs> that's so crazy because that's what's going on inside all of, all of us. Watch. For before, for before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land, look at the word, the land, it's Adama. It's from Adam, like the word man. It's from 119, like Genesis 1. The word Adam comes from 119. This is word 127. Watch. Before the child shall know to refuse evil and choose the good, the land, the Adama, thou abhorrest. Look at this through the idea of severing oneself from. Look at what you're looking at. Through the idea of severing oneself from. How many times have I done that? I didn't see the Lord show me this last night. You cut the line to the evil. We are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You you cut the line to evil and then you turn away from it with all your heart. You're like, I'm not going to do it. I'm done. Help me, Jesus. I'm guilty as charged. Watch this. Look at what it says. You shall call his name with us is L. And before the child shall know to refuse to cast away evil and choose good. See, tree of knowledge of good and evil. Cast away evil and choose good. The land, the Adama that thou abhorrest through the idea of severing oneself from. Look at the root of it. To clip off. Are you kidding me? Shall be forsaken to loose and relinquish. Just to, even in the definition of who the Lord God in the system is. In the following two verses, it shows you exactly what I've been telling you over and over again before I even knew that. You cut the Bluetooth line to the pit. You're like, I'm done with you. Lord, I just want you. I only want good. You cut the evil. You quit lying. You're like, I'm done with it. Forgive me. I would rather know you, the truth, and know than anything. It doesn't matter what happens. The truth is everything. Everything. 100% nylon. Y'all remember, right? Jonathan, read the tags in your shirt. So now my testimony is totally true, isn't it? Read the tags in your shirt. The night I got saved. That's so weird. Some source is telling me to read the tags in my shirt. And I read it. It said 100% nylon. <laughs> what? That doesn't make any sense. Turn it upside down. Surely you're turning the things upside down should be esteemed as the potter's clay. Oh, so the Lord was telling me to turn it upside down the night I met him so I could be the potter's clay. Surely you're turning the things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. He was giving me my soul back. He was loosening me from the dungeon where my soul was imprisoned because of the demon connection. So then I turned the word nylon upside down and I said, 100% no lion. Zzz, my whole body lit up with energy, light. I was like, what's going on? What? It, you can't lie, not even 1%. 100% nylon. 
1% lie is still a lie. So if my good friend calls me up and he tells me, well, my dad was the most moral man. He was such a good guy. He was one of the best guys I know. I'm like, that has nothing to do with did you get saved? Nothing. Zero. Just means he was a super great, cool, and moral man. That's all. Doesn't mean he was convicted of his sin. It doesn't mean he was born again. And I'm sorry, but I had I would have to say that to anybody. How horrible do you think that is? But I'd rather tell everyone the truth and risk losing the relationship than risk them going to the pit as well. It's just, I couldn't live with that. So, look at what you're looking at. For before the child shall know to refuse evil, cast away, cast off evil, and choose good, the land, the Adama, like Adam, the Adama that thou abhorrest through the idea of severing oneself, and it means literally to clip off, to clip off, shall be forsaken, to loose and relinquish of both, double, twofold, her kings, what have I been telling you? You're in a dualistic twin system. It's right there, right after Emmanuel. <laughs> okay, now, watch this. In that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. I will profess to them I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, whoever heareth them and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Let's go to Matthew 16. Matthew 16. So you know, so you know what the rock is now. Matthew 16. Nobody got it right. Jesus said, Who do people say that I am? So Jesus said to them, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Everyone got it wrong. They And they said, some say thou art John the Baptist. <clears throat> some say Elias. <clears throat> and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. <clears throat> and then Jesus said to him, who do you say I am? Now look, the word I am is to exist. Okay. Did you know the way you prove the Lord God exists is by turning things up in this dimension? That's That proves the very existence of God. I'll show it to you. Watch. But whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered unto him, so the self-existent eternal Jehovah said unto him, Now don't forget, remember the self-existent eternal Jehovah? Let's look at the number for that. I want you to see the number. Watch. See, 1961. Okay, well, ready? Picture Jesus on the cross right side up and Peter on the cross upside down. So surely your team turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. So when you get converted, you get turned up. Your eyes became single. There's no longer uh, an angel and a demon inside you. There's an angel that's been converted. And you have the Holy Spirit instead of opposing spirits. And it's even in the number of his name. I just showed you, look. And Jesus said, Jesus, ready? Jesus. Who's Jesus? Jehovah saves. The self-existent. The reason it's self-existent is because he is the one nine. He is the six one. He owns them both. Okay, that's why he's the self-existent eternal Jehovah. Now watch. And he says, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. So what's this guy's name? Simon. His name's Simon. Simon, that is the name of nine Israelites. So this guy's name is Simon, and Barjona means son of Jonas. That's what Barjona means. Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to thee, but my father which is in heaven. So now you know how Jesus is revealed to you 
through the Father. The Bible says no one comes to the Son except through the Father, except through the Son. And then the, the Bible says, and the, the Father will draw you to his Son. Now watch. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal it to thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Now remember this. Remember this scripture. Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils, have we not done many wonderful works? And I will profess to them, depart from me, I never knew you. Why? Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house upon a rock. Let's go back to Matthew 16. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. What rock? Well, here it is. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. So now he's changing this guy's name. His name was Simon, son of Jonah. Now he's going to change his name. And thou art Peter. It means a piece of rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Look, what rock? Okay, 4073. I'm going to change the color so it's easier to read. It means a mass of rock, a foundation. See it? A mass of rock, a literally a foundation. So this word is Petra, the word for, I'm going to name you Peter, the name Peter is Petros, a piece of rock. So upon this rock, I will build my church. Well, Jesus was crucified right side up, and Peter, which represents the evil us in the system, was ends up being crucified upside down. That's why right now in this scripture, Jesus is going to give him the key to the kingdom of heaven, which I'm going to give to you. This is the rock. He says, and upon this rock, I will build my church. What does the word church mean? Meeting, but it's a calling out. Those of us that get to get called out of the system that you call the world. That's what the word church means. A calling out. Ecclesia. So look, upon this rock, I will be, build my church. What rock? Well, Peter, I'm going to, thou art little rock, and upon this Petra, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Though that's pretty important, keys. A key as in shutting a lock. Look, to close, literally, literally or figuratively, to shut up. Well, so this is how it shut. And to open it, you got to turn it the opposite direction, and the two become one, and your eyes become single. There's no longer, look at Jesus crucified right side up, and Peter crucified upside down. When you turn it the other way, your eyes become single, and your whole body's full of light. That's why Peter was a representation of that which is evil in this world. That's why he was crucified upside down. That is the rock. That's the key to knowledge. That's the key to key of David. I just that's the keys to the kingdom of heaven. I just gave it to you. So how'd you get in the door without the key? So watch. Let me show you this. Let me show you something else. Okay, one moment. So let me show you how this little gem has been hidden in scripture uh this whole time. Watch. So 6969, right? I'm sorry, 6-9. A 6 is just an inverted 9, isn't it? So you can take a 6 and you turn it upside, you just rotate it this way. If I take this 6 and I wrote it this way, it becomes a 9. Now look, when Jesus was crucified in Matthew 27, 27:45. Now from the 6 hour, see at number 6, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. Because see, listen folks, when Jesus, it's even in the Bible, look, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land. But then, to the ninth hour, and then Jesus dies, 
in his death, there's no longer darkness because now we can come out of the darkness into the light. We can go from six to nine. Do you get it? It's like, it's, like, it's the simplest thing in the world. That's why it's so hard to understand the profundity of it, how profound it is. That's why that scene from National Treasure, when Nicolas Cage goes, could it really be that simple? And he puts the pipe stem in and the pipe, and he turns it upside down and the door opens and he gets the greatest treasure there is. I'm going to give that to you right now. Here you go. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to enlarge it. Okay, so here's his right. Here's his left. This represents Jesus. Well, let's let's do Peter instead. Let's. This represents Peter. This is Peter's right and this is left. They are in the opposite position over here is what would be Jesus. So when Peter was crucified, he said the exact, the reason they took the Acts of Peter out of the Bible is it would be so simple. I have the Acts of Peter up on my wall. Peter said, learn ye the mystery of all things, unless you make the things of the right hand as those of the left, and those of the left as those of the right and those above as those below, you will have no knowledge of the kingdom of God. So if you haven't turned things, you know, upside down, or it's really up because, see, you're upside down, you're inverted. But when you turn everything the opposite direction, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay, that which the self-existent eternal Jehovah gave life to. That means you're redeemed. Look, Unless you make the things of the right hand as those of the left. So how do I make this right hand the same as the left? Or how do I make the left the same as the right? How do I make that above as that below? Well, I simply turn this upside down. So if I take this image and I just rotate it like this, 100% nylon, then I've accomplished exactly that, which, uh, you know, which I was trying to do. Okay, yeah. Now watch. Let me show you. Let me just show you a couple things. So here's the word reversal. A change to an opposite direction, position, or course of action. See, we need a reversal in our lives. A turnaround and about face. It also means an annulment of a judgment or decree made by a court. So if you get your, your sentence against you reversed, it literally means, you know, it got thrown out of court because you got you got inverted. You you came to the knowledge of the truth. Like remember, I told you the night I got saved. It said 100% nylon, and I I didn't understand. I heard the Lord say, "Turn turn it upside down," meaning nylon, n y l o n. When you up turn it upside down, it's no line. That's the way the Lord communicated to me the very first message ever, and I was on the rock from the get go when I. The, my very first communication with the Lord God. Now, again, here is the mystery of it all. Here's an image of the virgin. It's really a dead sheep. There's the sheep's eye. There's the eye. There's the nose, the nostril, nostril, lines, and lip. There's the tongue sticking out. There's the sheep's eye and eye. Okay, well, I just turned the virgin the opposite direction, and that's the mystery of everything. It's We got caught in a female system when the angels that were willing to have sex with human women, um, we got caught in a snare. And that's why we have to be born again out of the snare. And if we don't get born again out of it, then we go to the pit. Now, here it is. Here's the rock. Here's understanding the system. Okay, now, uh, let's see. Hang on one sec. Okay, so... You don't want the Lord to say, depart from me, I never knew you, because you weren't on the rock, do you? No, you don't. Of course, that would be horrifying. Can you imagine thinking that you're saved? Thinking that, oh, because I went to church, I'm good. Thinking because you're a moral person, you're good. This is just like my friend. He thinks because his dad was a great guy, it has something to do with him getting saved. And he said, there's no, there's no effing way my dad's in hell. That's what he said. And I said, well, you're making that based on nothing. I mean, if if what you're saying isn't rooted in the word of God, it's just words that have no merit. They have no meaning. There's no meaning in those words. Well, the word of God that I've shown you, I'm showing you how to make sure 
you don't come to the end of your life and find out, oh, wow, the most important thing I missed. doesn't matter how nice of a person you are. It doesn't matter how much good you've done. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, none of that matters. Did you get saved? Uh, did you get born again? Were you born of the Spirit? If you weren't, I can't lie to you, folks. I can't lie to my good friend to make him feel better. You're not. If you're not born again, you're not saved. If you don't have the indwelling Holy Spirit, you're not saved. If you're not saved, you're going to the pit forever. And I love you in Christ, but I owe it to everybody to be sincere and honest. I feel horrible for my friend. I wish I could fix it. The best thing I can do is hope that he gets saved. But remember the Bible also says, for those whom he did foreknow, those he did predestine, those he predestined, he called, and those he called, he justified, and those he justified, he sanctified. So the word of God cannot be overturned. It cannot be disannulled because of your opinion. Opinions mean zero, absolutely nothing. So be warned, be advised. I just, I think this is going to be one of the best just off the cuff videos I've ever done just to show you the simplicity of knowing the truth and getting converted and how important it is that you don't, assume because you're a good person or i mean were you were you convicted of your sin did you know that something was really wrong were you disgusted with it watch did you i mean were did you have a conviction of your sin were you disgusted with it did you turn per did you willfully did you willfully turn to christ with your whole heart. Watch this. This is uh, again talking after. You know. The coming of Jesus. And you will call his name. Emmanuel. With us, is El, with us is El. The almighty God. And butter and honey shall he eat. Butter means to join. As a wall of protection. And then honey to stick together. Uh, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land, the atoma of the, the atoma that thou abhor, that thou abhorrest through the idea of severing oneself from, um, and also, also to clip, to clip off, just like I've shown you, you clip the Bluetooth line to the pit that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken to loosen relinquish of both twofold to her kings. The Lord shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon thy father's house. Um, and he's talking about, you know, that, that the enemy or those that are against it, especially the family a dungeon, shall bring upon thy father's house to the one that he's speaking to. Days that have not come from that day that Ephraim double fruit so see Ephraim represents the twin system the double fruit look double fruit departed to turn off or turn depart or turn away departed from Judah Yehuda I mean look at this and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord the self-existent Jehovah Look, self-existent, eternal Jehovah shall hiss. What an interesting word. It means as to scorn, to hiss for the fly. Look at the fly, especially a stinging insect. I mean, in the uttermost part of the rivers of Egypt. I mean, do you know what you're reading? You're reading everything I've been telling you. The Lord himself, the self-existent Jehovah shall hiss. It means to call in or scorn. For the fly, especially a stinging fly, especially one of a stinging nature. Let's go to Jonathan's. Let's go to Jonathan's folders. Oh my God, are you kidding? Uh, I mean, you know, Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga means 
gadfly, the destruction, it means a stinging fly. I mean, dude, this is everything I've told you guys. I mean, you couldn't even think this up. No one could even think up what I'm showing you right now. And here you go. Just, I mean, I'll show it to you right now. Look. Really? There's Lady Gaga. There's a there's a bug on her chest. That's that is the serpent race. See, Lady Gaga is the serpent race that's above ground hunting us, and below ground they're feeding the bug system. That's why the largest altar in the world is the same as Lady Gaga's chest. It's a damn bug. And this has a penis in its mouth. And Lady Gaga's bug on her chest, the mandibles go straight to the tip of the spear that went right through the triangle that's where her vagina is. So it's the same damn thing. There you go. I mean, you know. I mean, guys, I mean, I don't know if y'all understand what just got shown to you in the scriptures. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord, the self-existent eternal Jehovah, one nine six one shall hiss for the fly, a stinging insect that is in the uttermost part of the rivers of Egypt. And the bee, look at the bee in the sense of orderly motion. It because the, just like the world that they put together in the land of Assyria, it means in the sense of successful because their venture was a success to carry us away captive. I mean, I don't know if you guys understand what's being delivered right here. Do y'all understand what you're getting shown? This is everything I've been showing you in the scriptures right under you shall call his name Emmanuel. So anyway, pray for my friend Bobby. Keep him in your prayers. And be warned, be advised, be advised. It doesn't matter how moral a person you think you are. Unless you repented. Unless you admitted your guilt before God. Unless you got converted. Unless you were born again. You will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Watch this. Unless you are converted. Matthew 18, 3. And verily I say unto you, except a man be converted and become his little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so if you don't enter the kingdom of heaven, what happens? You go into the pit. Conver converted to twist, that is to turn quite around, reverse, reverse. Reverse. Remember, turn quite around. Reverse. Here we go. Bam. There you go. Unless you go from here to here and the right becomes the left, the left becomes the right. Unless you reverse. So it says, unless you reverse, you will not change to an opposite direction course of action. Okay, now, so here's the thing. After I shared this with my friend and I said, no, I can't. I'm not going to... I'm not going to say, yes, your dad has ascended and your dad's in heaven. I can't say that. Otherwise, I'd be just as disingenuous as, uh, as you know, a politician. They're just, they'll say whatever. It's just, it's a joke. I can't do that. I can't do that for anybody. And I, I don't know what to do except... to show you what I know, who I know. I know the King of Kings. I work for the King of Kings. And I, I can assure you, he knows I love my friend and I feel terrible for him. And I don't know what to do. And there's nothing I can do except pray and hope that my friend wants to know the truth more than anything and that he seeks it out. Otherwise, the same fate awaits him. All right, guys, I love you in Christ. Kind of a serious vid, but I think this was super important. So it's hard for me to be uh, just, you know, hey, you know, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm grieved for my friend. And I, I, I just, you know, I just, I wish I could make it better. But guys, here's the thing. Look, look at Jesus. 
he died for me as much as he died for you, as much as he died for my friend's dad, as much as he's died for my friend. And it doesn't matter who you are. If you don't take the free gift, then the free gift judges you no matter how good of a person you are, no matter how many good works you've done. If you haven't repented, you haven't been born again. If you haven't been converted, if you haven't, Jesus said, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus said, unless, you, uh, unless you're on the rock, look what he said to the people that he turned away. Look what, he, look what he said to them. He said, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto a wise man that built his house upon a rock. I showed you what the right rock is, right side up, upside down. Uh, we, we were showing that in Matthew 16. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. So when you're on the rock, you can take a beating. Uh, I know, I've taken that beating for a long time. Okay. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which, which built his house upon the sand. When the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell, great was the fall of it. So here's the thing. If you have your house built on the sand, you're not on the rock. You don't know the truth. You haven't been converted. When that storm and that, you know, when everything comes, you won't be able to stand. You won't. You'll crumble. All right, guys. I love you in Christ. Pray for my friend. Um, very important scriptures today. Very, very, very important. It's Getting saved is, <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but getting saved is everything. And then I'll do my next video probably tomorrow and I'll try and uh, I, hopefully I, you know, I don't want to carry around the burden of, of the sadness for my friend tomorrow. All right. I love you guys.